Hi, I'm Stephanie Jaworski of JoyBaking.com. Today we're going to make petit fours, and this is what they look like. Aren't they beautiful? What we have is three layers of cake sandwiched together with an apricot preserve and a raspberry preserve, and then we're going to coat the uh, cake with a white chocolate glaze, and then we're going to decorate with royal icing. So the first thing, we're going to start with our cake. So preheat your oven to 375 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 190 degrees Celsius. And then you will need a sheet pan. Now, that is 12 and a half by 7, 17 and a half by 1 inch high by inches, or that would be 32 by 44 by 2 and a half centimeters. And then we're going to butter our pan. And what I like to do is just melt a little butter and then use a pastry brush. I find that easier than using a cold stick of butter and rubbing it on the pan, although you could do that. And you could just spray it with one of those non-stick sprays if you prefer, either way. Okay, and then we're going to line the bottom of the pan with a sheet of parchment paper just to make sure we don't want that cake to stick. Okay. So now for our cake batter, if you have a stand mixer like I have here, use your paddle attachment or you could use a hand mixer for this. Now, uh, petit fours, a lot of times you have a layer of cake and then you put a layer of marzipan over top. We're going to simplify that and we're going to put the almond paste right in the cake batter. So the first thing we need is two thirds of a pound, which is 300 grams of almond paste. Now almond paste is really a, gr a mixture of gr uh, ground blanched almonds and sugar that's kind of mixed together with either glucose corn syrup or egg whites. And it has a really nice almond flavor and it's a grainy texture. And you can, nor you can find on the baking aisle of your grocery store either um, in cans or tubes or sometimes you can even f buy it in tubs. And if you have any left over, because sometimes depending on how you buy it, you will, just put it in an airtight plastic bag and just put it in your freezer and be great for quite a few months. So what I'm going to do now is just beat this on low speed just to kind of break up the almond paste. Okay, that's good. And next, what I'm going to add is two thirds of a cup, that's 135 grams of granulated white sugar. And I'm just going to mix those two until they're nice and thoroughly mixed together. Just on medium low speed. Okay, that looks good. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to gradually add two thirds of a cup, which is 150 grams of uh, butter. You can use either salted or unsalted. I, as you know, I prefer unsalted for the flavor. And I just cut it into small pieces and have it at room temperature, actually a, a little soft. And I'm going to just gradually add it. And then we're going to continue to mix it until the batter is kind of nice and light and fluffy. And then I'm going to add right now, I like a little almond flavor, or uh, sorry, a little vanilla flavor. So I'm just going to add just a half a teaspoon of pure vanilla extract. If you don't want the uh, little bit of vanilla flavor, then you can just leave that out. Okay, that looks good. Really smell the almond flavor. Okay, I'll just... So this is what you're looking for. Getting some nice air into our batter. Okay, so as always, scrape the bottom and the sides of your bowl as much as you need to to make sure everything gets mixed together. So now what we're going to add, one at a time, 
is three quarters of a cup, which is 180 milliliters of eggs. I find that is about four large eggs. If you would prefer to go by weight, that would be 190 grams and weigh them like not in the shell. So I'm gonna add one egg, beat that in and then just continue on. Make sure, I don't think I mentioned, make sure your eggs are at room temperature because they will mix in a lot better if you warm them up a bit. Okay, that looks good. I'm just going to beat that just for a second more. Okay, so now we need some flour. So two thirds of a cup, 85 grams of all purpose flour. You may know that is plain flour. And then I'm going to add about a quarter of a teaspoon of salt. If you use salted butter, you could leave out the salt. And I'm just whisking those together. Now, we're not adding any baking powder or baking soda because when you're making um, petit fours, you want like a dense cake. You don't want a real light and fluffy because we're layering it in their little tiny things. So no baking powder or soda. So I'm just gonna add the flour and start at low speed and beat that in. And that's it. As you can see, that's a really easy batter to make. It tastes so good. <laughs> okay, so. Just going to give that a quick stir with my spatula, make sure all that flour is mixed in. Okay, and then we're just going to pour it into our pan. It smells so nice, that almond flavor, that almond paste. It adds a nice taste, nice texture to your cake. So now, I'm just using an offset spatula. You could use the back of a spoon or a knife and just spread it out. Try to get it even. Make sure you get in the corners. you're doing this try to run it over because there always is a tendency to have more batter in the center of the pan I don't know why that is but so uh, we want it all like fairly even in thickness so okay so now what we're going to do is bake this you know everyone's oven is a little different between uh, 15 to 18 minutes now this cake is not going to rise very much so you know when it's firm to the touch You'll get nice color to it, and a toothpick inserted into the center will come out clean. Okay, so our cake is now done. You can see beautiful color and set. So now, what I'm going to do, now I put it on a wire rack. And we're going to let it cool in the pan. But what I'm just going to do is take a spatula or a knife and just run it just to make sure it's not sticking. And then we're going to let it completely cool. And when we come back, we will take it out of the pan. Okay, so now it's been about 15 minutes. So I want to just take the cake out of the pan. So I'm just going to grab it like this. Whoop. Don't worry if you have a little of that because we can just fix that. And then I'm just going to take it and slide it like so. 
And then what I'm going to do is let that finish cooling, and then we're going to cut it into thirds and stack it. So now our cake has completely cooled and we're going to cut it into thirds. Now what I like to do, because I find the edges of this cake are a little crisp and I don't, I don't want that in my, uh, when I stack them, so what I do is just cut off with a sharp knife, just cut off the, the edges. You don't have to if you like those and keep those because to me, this is a cook's treat. Because I like, actually, I like the uh, crisp edges to snack on. And so does Baxter. <laughs> so. Okay. And now I'm going to cut it into thirds. Good time to have your ruler handy. I've already marked it, so three, like so. Okay. And then I want to cut through that parchment, so I just have some kitchen scissors, and I'm just going to quickly do that. That way I can easily lift the cake layers. Okay, I cut through? Yeah. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is I get that little, to take, and what I just have is like, you can just have any kind of baking sheet. I put a piece of parchment paper down. You could put like wax paper or even just plastic wrap. And then I'm just going to flip it over like so. Now as you can and peel off your parchment now, you can see that little place where I, don't worry about that, just kind of fit it in. So now what we're gonna do, because we're gonna stack these, I'm going to put a layer of apricot preserves. So you'll need about a quarter of a cup, 60 milliliters. I did heat this and strain it to, because there was a little bit of fruit and I wanted it nice and uh, smooth. Now, what is really nice too, is you could add a little bit of Grand Marnier to your apricot preserves. That tastes really good if you wanna do that, but if you're serving to kids, you might not want to. And then back of the spoon, or I'm using an offset spatula, just spread your preserves out. This adds nice flavor, plus it, it acts like a glue. Even it up there. And I have the same amount, a quarter of a cup, 60 milliliters of um, raspberry preserves. Again, you could add like maybe a little um, cherry liqueur if you wanted to. Now, if I like to, if you're using, uh, buying a raspberry jam, raspberry preserve that has the seeds, again, heat it up and strain it because I, I think it's better without the seeds for this. Or, you know, there is a recipe on the site with the video to make your own raspberry jam, which is actually what I've done here. But if you don't want to do the extra work, I mean, the store-bought is just fine here. And again, just spread that out. And, you know, if you didn't want to use the apricot and the raspberry jam, I mean, you could use, you know, other um, types of preserves. Or you could just use both layers raspberry or both layers um, apricot. You know, it's up to you. Don't feel you have to do it this way. Okay. Looks good. And then we have our final layer. Top that off. I'm going to, actually, I'm going to leave the paper on because what we're going to do now 
And just to even that up is I'm going to, we're going to chill this because after we're going to cut our shapes out, but we want this to um, be chilled before we do that. So I'm just going to cover it. Now, what I'm going to do is weigh this down because I want it to flatten out and get, get really nice and compressed so we have really tight layers. So, I mean, you could put another baking sheet with, you know, maybe a pot or something, or I, I just have a platter here. I'm just going to put that over there, and I'm going to put it in the fridge, you know, uh, I would say two, three hours. You want it chilled, or really, if you want, you can even do it overnight. And when we come back, we will cut out our shapes. Okay, so now this is well chilled. Actually, I did let it chill overnight. So I'm just going to peel off. And as you can see, it's nice and compacted and firm. So that's what you're looking for. So now, I mean, there's all, you can cut it any shape you want. Some people like squares. I'm going to use round. I prefer round mainly because when I try to pour the glaze over, I find a round shape. It, flows more easily than when you have the squares and you get those little corners. So, but either way, and you can do it any size you want. I'm using a round cookie cutter. This is about one and a half inches, about four centimeters. And you will get about uh, 24, I think, about that using this size. So, you know, just, and press straight down. And then I just have a cookie sheet here lined. And it's, see, see how nice it is? It's nice and firm and compact and you can see the layers. That's what you're looking for. So just go along, just try to cut them as close together as you can, because you don't want to waste. Now you will have, if you're doing rounds, you will have leftover. Don't throw those away. <laughs> Keep them. And then if you don't want to do it right away, what I do is just take all the pieces, freeze them, and then later when I uh, want a quick dessert, I can make a uh, trifle, layer that with some cream and fruit, and you got one delicious trifle. Okay, so just keep going like this. Okay, so there we go. Looks good. So now I'm just going to cover these with plastic wrap, put them back in the fridge just to chill them a little. And then when we come back, we will make our white chocolate glaze. Okay, so now we'll do our white chocolate glaze. So you will need a saucepan of barely simmering water because we're using white chocolate and white chocolate is pretty temperamental. So you don't want that water too hot. And you will also need a heat proof bowl. I like to use stainless steel. Now what you need is Really, this is just chocolate and butter with a little bit of shortening. So what you want to use is you will need eight ounces. That's 230 grams of white chocolate. Now make sure this is white chocolate and how you know whether it's that is look in the ingredients and make sure there's cocoa butter in, in, um, in the ingredients. So I've bought these ones that are in little pellet discs. I mean, if it's in a block, if you buy like a chocolate bar, then just chop it coarsely. And you will need six tablespoons of butter and have that at room temperature. And then I like to cut it into smaller pieces so it melts faster. So uh, six tablespoons, 80 grams of butter and one tablespoon, about 13 grams of vegetable shortening. And just that is it. What I, I like this because it, it flows really smoothly over our cakes. Plus, we put them in the fridge, and that with the butter and the chocolate, it really hardens nicely. I know, uh, okay, I'm just going to put this over the saucepan and then just melt it very slowly. I know some uh, people with uh, petit fours like to use like a, a fondant. Uh, you could use that, a poured fondant or... Um, that, but the, what I find, the reason I'm not using a fondant is I find that a little too sweet and I find a white chocolate is a very nice, subtle flavor and it's not sweet. But by all means, you could use a fondant. Okay, that looks good. Isn't that look beautiful? So just take it off the heat. I, I should mention, I know some people say they have a hard time finding the uh, shortening. So just use another tablespoon or so, or so of uh, butter and that'll be fine. 
So now I'm just going to let this cool slightly and when we come back we're going to glaze our cakes. So when I pour the glaze over the cakes what I like to do is have a baking sheet and then put a rack and then put your cakes on here and then check which side is the night like this side is a little flatter so that's what I'm and that one's good and this one I think I'll turn over show a nice flat top now for this amount of glaze it'll the amount I made here you get a really thin layer if you prefer a thicker layer then you might have to make you know, maybe another half batch of your glaze, but I'd start with this. And then what I like to do is just have like a ladle or I have just a measuring cup, put a little of your glaze and then have your cake and then just pour it over the top. And sure, you wanna look, make sure you get all the way. And then just let it drip down like so. And then if you need to fill in, you just do that and then just keep going. And then after you go through all your glaze and just uh, scrape it off your baking sheet, if you have to strain it, if there's any crumbs, just strain it. And if it gets too thick, you may have to put it back over your uh, water, your simmering water, and then just do that. And then what I do, just take a spatula and just move it so it's... So it doesn't stick and then let it dry a little on uh, your um, little thing here let, let it dry a little set up a little on this and then transfer it and then put them in the fridge to harden nicely and then when we come back I will show you how to decorate the tops so our final step for our petit fours is the royal icing. As you can see here, I like to put little dots or squiggles or that. So what you will need is a large bowl and you will need one large egg white, which by weight is about 30 grams and have that at room temperature. And what I'm gonna do is whisk that with one teaspoon just to break up the egg white and it adds a little flavor. I'm gonna add about a teaspoon of fresh lemon juice and I'm just going to whisk that. I mean you could use your um, electric mixer but it's pretty simple to do this by hand. Okay, just to break up that white and then what I'm going to add is one and a half cups of, that is a 180 grams of confectioner sugar you may know that as powdered or icing sugar and always sift it which I've already done because it always has lumps and then I'm just going to add that in and we're just going to stir it until we get a nice royal icing that we can I want I'm going to pipe this so I want to get a nice consistency. Now I have, if you notice I have some water here because if it's too thick, I will thin it with some water. Or you could use a little more lemon juice, whichever. Okay, so that's, that looks a little thick. So what I'm gonna do is just add, and just add a little bit of water. Because what I want, you want it to, uh, I'm going to do the little dots and squiggles, and you want it thick enough that it will hold its shape and not run too much. Yes, I think that's about right. Now, you could use it white, or you can color it. And, I mean, you could put your royal icing, if you want different colors, you want to, you can put, divide it up, and then, but I'm just going to do it pink. Yeah, I'm happy with that. So. I'm using a gel paste. I mean, you could use the liquid, whatever you have. And the gel paste is very concentrated. And I find with these, you want to kind of, typically they're a very pale color. So just add a little at the beginning. And then you can always add more and you can't, but you can't take it away once you, once you color it. So just keep that in mind. Cause as you can see, I just put a little drop and it's, and then really stir it in. And I think I'll add just a bit more. OK, 
careful because you can see that stuff really died. I've got pink hands now. Okay, so that looks, yeah, that looks about right. And if you've never worked with royal icing, it dries out very quickly and will get a crust on the top. So if you're not working with it, have it covered at all times. Okay, so that's good. Uh, I think, no, I think that thickened a little much. I'm going to add just a touch more water to that. You might just, just as you know, you may have to play with it a bit. And then I'm going to pipe it. So you, if you don't have, I'm just using one of these disposal, uh, pastry bags disposable. I mean, you could use just like a little freezer bag or you could use a paper cone. And what I did is I have a glass and at the bottom, I have a piece of wet paper towel because once I cut it off, like I said, you don't, you want to keep it moist. So that way, if you're working with it and you have to leave or something, it still won't dry out. Okay, so that's good. So I'm going to put it here and then I'm just going to clean up. And when we come back, I'll show you how to uh, finish off your petit fours. Okay, so now we're ready. So I have some of my little cakes here and the white chocolate glaze did harden. So now what I did is I just cut the end off. So make sure you press down, twirl, get all the air out of your bag. And then I usually have a plate because I want to just see if a little test there, if I've cut off enough of my tip. And then, I mean, you can do anything. Uh, you can do the squiggles or just dots as big or as small as you want. Just have fun with it. Just do that or you could the whatever whatever you like or uh, spirals or I mean have fun with it. Now you can cover and store these in the fridge for at least a week, maybe 10 days. So it's great. It's a great do ahead thing if you had a party and you wanted to make a large amount. So let's try. So I'm going to try these ones because I want that to set. And as you can see, you have the three layers of that beautiful almond uh, cake and then the apricot and the raspberry and then the white chocolate glaze. These are so elegant and the taste is, um, is so unique and like there's, there's a lot going on there. Very like almost sophisticated flavor because you have so much the, the almond, the apricot, raspberry and the white chocolate glaze. I really like because it's not too sweet. They're just excellent. So enjoy. And until next time, I'm Stephanie Jaworski of joybaking.com.